Hi friends, I'm Kalina. Welcome to Eat, Read, Sleep, where we come together as a community to vibe with books. Let's do it. I'm Tapas, and today we're summarizing the book, Don't Believe Everything You Think, Why Your Thinking is a Beginning and End of Suffering by Joseph Nguyen. Guys, this is a book about insights. It's about looking within ourselves and discovering the wisdom that already exists within us. We're going to be talking about how our thinking causes our suffering and how we can stop that suffering in order to find complete peace, unconditional love, and overwhelming joy. Great. And while you do that, I'm going to just take a step out and visit my therapist because this is kind of hitting a little too close to home and I need to work on some stuff. So, bye bye. Okay. Um, all right. I guess it's just me then. Okay. So, let's take a look at this book. Topaz. You're two minutes late. Come on in. Okay. Sorry. Oops. Thanks for meeting me last minute. It's my, uh, my first time. No. You look really familiar, like my best friend Cal. Interesting. Are you nervous? Mm, never mind. Let's, let's get started. Alright, Doc. So, how do you want me? You know, should I... Nerd him? This is my first time, so is it like... like Don Draper, or should I like lie down? Maybe lie down a little bit? Like, I don't know. George, George, Seinfeld, this, right? Or what What else? Kip Winslet from Titanic, maybe? This is good. This is, I think I feel good here. I'll lie down. How about this? How about this? How about this, you know, total like caskety, like a mummy, sort of like memento mori, you know? Uh, I'm like, Huge on stoicism, doc. So this is like important. You know, this is good. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Um, I feel good. Well, why don't we just sit? I guess. Yeah. You know, like yoga. Maybe yoga. Yoga like this. Like total zen. You know. I feel good. This, this is the spot right here. This is the spot. Okay. No. Fine. Fine. I guess normal. Okay. Sorry, doc. Yeah. Got a lot on my mind today, you know. Like my my brain's just running wild. Your ego. Now what? Your ego. Your brain is your ego, and it's what fights and attempts to make everything in your life so complex. So then, like, why did my life suck? You know, like I feel like I'm like, you know, Kevin Durant. Like, it, every, everything just kind of sucks right now. Like, what's what's the what's the word? Like, it's constantly what's the word? Suffering. There you go, Doc. Suffering. That's why, that's why they paid the big bucks. Huh? Um, yeah, suffering, you know, like, it's like a sucky suffering, you know, like a super sucky suffering. Oh, it's, it's a cool title for an actual movie, but then again, okay, I digress. You know, it's like that feeling you get. Topaz, there's a Buddhist saying that all of our negative energy, all of our negative feelings are like two arrows coming at us. The first arrow is something that we can't really control. It comes at you and it's painful. The second arrow is like an emotional arrow and that's even more painful, it's suffering. So we can't control the first one, but we can't control the second one, the suffering. So, hang on Doc, let me, let me get it straight. You're saying that I get to decide how I react, but the world kind of sucks at times, right? So then you're saying it's my fault that I feel bad about myself? Indeed. What? So let's let's do this. Let me look in your file right here. It says that you used to work at Is that right? Yeah, talk about suffering. Did you know anyone there that liked their job? Yeah, like like my best friend Cal, you know, she's like you know, you wouldn't look like her like with that glasses. But uh then again, you know, she's like this super like you know, if you're doing one thing, you're not doing anything like super uh, you know, like those kind of people. You guys have the same job? Yeah. So why do you think that she liked her job, but you didn't, even though it was the same job? I mean, Doc, I, maybe I have a lot on my mind, right? Like, my dad's health's not doing so well, you know, you're, you're writing. I, I'm just taking some okay. notes. Like, my dad's health's not going so well, you know, like, I'm stressed out all the time because of the company I work for. Um, you know, there's dumb pill reports that are due, like, EOD, what, are, what does EOD even mean, you know? Like, it's end of day, it could be any end of day. It could be like Taiwan time or whatever, right? Like, I don't get it, my boss is weird. Then they're talking about restructuring again, and I don't know if I'm gonna have a job. Like, it's just so many things. I, I bought this nice car, but it cost me an arm and a leg, so I gotta keep working, and then, then 
it's just everything, Doc. I don't know. So it sounds like it might not actually be the job. What do you mean, Doc? I, I just said it's the dumb payroll reports. Did you not write that down? What about your friend, Cal, is it? Does she think the reports are dumb? Um, no, but she's weird. Hey, I mean, um, so what I think is your friend, Cal, she has a different perspective. And we all have our own perceptions of the world because this is all that we see. Mm -hmm. So your reality, your perception, actually may not be reality at all. Hang on, Doc. So, like, this sounds like the Matrix all over again, right? You're saying, like, this isn't reality. So then what is reality? Like, is gum even gum? Is book even book? Is it die even dice? Is it, what's that again? Whatever. But, you know, I don't get it. So reality is an event or a thing that just happens. There's no meaning to it. You don't put any interpretation to it. It's just there. The second that you put meaning and interpretation, that's when you become... A perception and it's no longer your reality it's what you put behind it so hang on you're seriously saying it's not the events that happen but it's how i interpret them well, that's, not say, that's not hard to say but. precisely well how you interpret them is what causes you to feel good or bad so our feelings do not come from external events but they come from our own thinking so like my so i'm happy with my job but then my my friend cal she's like this psycho cheerleader so, like, why do we even think? I mean, if it only causes suffering, then what's the point of thinking? I mean, that's what my, my boss always says to me, too. Well, our mind's job is to protect us. So think of it this way. Our brain is made to help alert us of potential dangers that may threaten us in our lives. And, in fact, it does it so well that it constantly is scanning our environment, recalling past experiences, and predicting what's going to happen in the future to protect you. But the thing is, we no longer live in these dangerous times where we have to feel like we are in flight or fight mode. And doing so will keep us in this state of anxiety, depression, fear, anger, resentment, all sorts of negative energy. Sounds like me though. So you're saying don't use my mind at all. Like don't even think at all. Just completely like flatline, flatline my, my brain? Well, there, there's a difference between thinking and thoughts. Okay, so thoughts are the energy that we use to create everything in the world. It's actually a noun. It's something that we have, not something that we do, which means no effort, no force. It just happens. That's a thought. Thinking, on the other hand, is an act. It's an act of thinking what your thoughts are. And this takes a significant amount of energy. It takes willpower, it takes effort, and it requires you to engage in the thoughts in your mind and ask questions and just think and just keep going. This is the root of all psychological suffering. Hmm. I'm starting to not get it. I don't get it, Doc. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm just uh, thinking on my thoughts too much, as you say. Okay. But that was super confusing. Okay, so let's think about this. What's the dream amount of money that you want to make a year? Eh, yeah, a million dollars. Great, that is a thought. You answered it and it does not cause you any emotional turmoil, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's multiply that by five. What if I told you you're going to make five million dollars a year? Ooh, what would I buy? That's a lot of money though. Like, I would feel overwhelmed. There's, I wouldn't even know who to tell, right? Like, can I tell my homie? Can I even tell Cal? She might just spend it on random stuff because she's going off on tangents but you know yeah that's a, that's a lot of money i don't know if i could do that so. and that is thinking mm. you didn't have any feelings or suffering until you started thinking about all the things that you're going to do with your money and that is the difference thoughts create thinking destroys and you can only ever feel what you are thinking okay so what you're saying is that if I, if, I, if I only feel what I'm thinking, then I'm just going to think positively and I'll be good? Close, but no. Tell me about the time that you were the happiest. Oh, easy. Um, Legoland this past weekend with, with my wife and my daughter. Okay, and what were you thinking? I mean, it was fun because like my daughter, it was her first time at a, on a roller coaster, so just seeing her excitement and energy okay. for going on there. Yeah. So you weren't really thinking, right? You were just feeling off her energy? Yeah. So most people don't have thoughts when they're happy. 
And when you think that you do, it actually are thoughts and thinking that happen after the feeling. You've already felt happy. So in essence, you don't need to have thoughts or thinking to even feel happy. Emotions just happen. Doc, that sounds wild. So you're saying that I don't really need thoughts, but I can still like feel positivity? Like, I don't have to think? What? So why don't we do this? Think about a car speedometer measuring your thoughts in miles per hour, like a thoughtometer. Hey. No. Um, the more you think, the more you go into that red line right and the red line represents your frustration your anger your stress you're being overwhelmed so it's not necessarily what you're thinking positive or not it's just the fact that you are thinking okay so hang on i think i get it now so it's not even what i'm thinking it's that i'm thinking at all that's causing me to suffer what do you think well who else good um i think i mean in an ideal world, that makes sense, right? But then how does someone just stop thinking? Like, it's a natural reaction. And, and, if, and if it was so easy, then there wouldn't be any suffering in the world. We wouldn't have any, like, you know, sadness and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna say. Well, to pause. Okay. We can't stop thinking, right? But we can reduce the amount of time so that we start to think less each day. The goal is to allow our thoughts to flow straight through our body and out the other side. We just minimize the thinking and just allow the thoughts to flow. So that makes no sense, Doc. Uh, so if you're saying if you don't think, then how do you plan and become successful at your job or your work? So tell me, what are you thinking when you are doing your absolute best work? Nothing. Like I'm in a zone, like Michael Jordan, you know. All right, precisely. So when you're doing your best work, you are in a total state of zone. You're in a total state of flow. There's no thinking. There's no separation between you and your thoughts and what's happening, what's going on. You're just present. In fact, when you think about athletes and performers, they don't think at all when they're doing their best work, like Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doc. So like, remind me of a Jocko Willing podcast I listened to recently, right, where he said like, you know, souls in, souls in combat, right? Mm -hmm. They rely on their instinct, they rely on their training, their preparation, their instinctiveness, their subconscious, like, reaction. Doc, are you calling me a Navy SEAL? Thank I, you. No, I, I did not say that at all. What I am saying, though, is that when we think, it only creates hesitancy. It creates reluctancy and doubtfulness, right? And that is when our insecurities, our fears, our overanalyzing happens. So like, what if I want, like, I want to be the best basketball player at age 37? Okay. Right? So like, what about my dreams and my goals and my ambition? You're saying that none of that I should think about? Well, it, it depends. There is a saying that to a mind without the limits of thinking, anything is possible. So goals can be created from two things, from inspiration or from desperation. And when we have inspiration goals, they're created from our thoughts. Right? So these are, are when we feel moved, when we feel inspired, when we feel expansive. These goals feel more like calling to action rather than an obligation that we have to do. Now, on the other hand, you have goals made out of desperation. And these come from thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay? There, there's a sense of urgency and it feels less daunting. When, you're, when you have desperation goals, thinking goals, you analyze, you judge, you criticize. You just rationalize and you use your past to try to create new goals. This is more of a means to an end. So like financial freedom by making a million dollars a year. Like I can be Elon yeah. Musk. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. You got it. Uh, one way to really identify if a goal is designed from inspiration or desperation is really to ask yourself, if I had all the amount of money in the world and I traveled everywhere and I don't get recognition for anything that I do, what would I do or what would I create? Doc, I think I'm getting it now. All right, so and then let me recap it, right? So my brain is my ego. My, my thoughts are factual things that happen. Uh, whereas when I think, that's when the suffering starts. That's where that's the root of my suffering, right? And then like, I, I'm not a caveman. Sometimes I am. I, well, not all the time. I'm not a caveman all the time, but I don't always need to be because there's no survival instinct. In fact, I don't have to feel thoughts or to think to feel positive emotion. So just make sure my goals are from inspiration and then 
not desperate thinking, and then I'm good to go. Ah, you are the... Thank you, this is the best. Not so fast. Oh. You got it this far, but now comes the hard part. The death of the personal ego. Death of the personal ego. Once you let go of everything that you thought you knew in this world and have experienced peace by non-thinking, your ego will bring back feelings of worry, of anxiety, and of doubt. Once you stop thinking, you have all this freed up energy, but you don't have anywhere to direct this energy, at least not yet. Your old pattern is to put it back into thinking. Because that's what I'm conditioned to do. Yes. So you will need to channel all this energy into <clears throat> goals of inspiration and practice that activation rule. Oh, you know, I heard this in a Joe Rogan podcast, dog. So like, sorry, I listen to a lot of podcasts, by the way. But it's, it's like a morning ritual, right? Where you, you know, you kind of like build a, a routine to get you in this state of flow, right? And like it builds momentum and then it kind of just carries with you throughout the day. What's that scientist? Is it, is it Thomas Edison, Tesla, uh, Isaac Newton? I don't know. Sorry, I, I feel a science class. But one of those dudes said an, ob an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking too much again, Doc. So how do I know what to do without actually thinking. So like what if I make a bad call or a bad decision? Nothing is either good or bad. There's only pleasant or unpleasant feelings that come from thinking. Man, knowing that there is no right or wrong can really relieve, relieve you of the pressure of choosing to make the right decision, right? Most of the time you already know deep down what it is that you want to do. This is called our gut feeling or our intuition. The problem is we try to confirm our tuition with the external world. And this is where most of our negative emotions surface. This is what's wreaking havoc on our mental state because of everyone's opinion. Mm, so it sounds like I already know what to do, but I just need to trust my instincts, you know, like less Kevin Durant, more Steph Curry. Yes. Follow your intuition. Sure. But remember that your intuition will always go against your logic and your rational mind. Intuition lives in a space of the unknown. But for there to be intuition and creation, there must first be space for it. This means you have to clear your mind of thinking, and only then will your intuition and creation come to you. Got it, Doc. So, like, be aware of my thinking. But it, it can cause a negative emotions, right? So create space by non-thinking so that intuitions and answers can just like come to me like women when I was in high school. Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Ah, Dalai Lama. Yes. Okay, I, I think that's it for today. No. Um, please pay up the front. Insurance is not accepted. Do, do it just say Bitcoin. No cash. Dogecoin. Only. Cash only. Yuck. Thank you, Tapas. In essence, we are only ever one thought away from feeling peace, joy, and love, which <laughs> come from a state of no thought. Sorry about that. Where, where were we? Uh, I'm just wrapping up. You want to take it away? Oh, yeah. Of course. Great. Guys, so listen. There's nothing inherently wrong with anyone or anything in the universe, but our thinking makes us think so. And this is the root cause of all of our suffering. As soon as you let go of your thinking, you make space for intuition and creation. You can feel positive emotions more than suffering thoughts. And the longer you can stay in this state, the more light you will see in your life. I love it. Hey, uh, how was your session today? It was good. Uh, but you know that the therapist, she kind of looks like you. It's, it's kind of odd. Oh, I wonder why. Photometer. Hey. So nice. It's, I, I don't know. know where I'm standing at now. <laughs> it's all over again. Okay. It's because of your stupid spaces. Why do you space things? Oh, oh, oh. Alright. Which thing you think? <laughs> Why you're thinking yeah. in the beginning? <laughs>